Welcome to 2021, y'all. I'm gonna kick the year off right just by helping you guys understand how you should charge clients. I know a lot of people going into the new year, this is like a fresh start. A lot of people are going to be pursuing their own you know, freelance work, their own production company. So today I'm gonna break it down very simply, very quickly without getting too crazy and messy with all this information on how you should charge clients. Now being someone who's been in the industry now for eight to 10 years and has worked with some of the biggest clients in the world, music labels, record labels, et cetera, this is how I have worked with those companies and people and charge them. The first and most important rule is always ask, what is your budget? The majority of the time, the client will come to you in the situation and be like, hey, this is the scope of the project, this is our deadline, this is our budget. Then within that budget, say the budget is 25,000, 30,000, 50,000, 10,000, whatever their budget is, you have to then write a treatment, whether that's a music video or for a commercial, sometimes they already have the creative, but you have to come up with the scope of what you can do within that given budget. Now for any client that doesn't approach you with what their budget is and they want you to take on a project, get an idea of what they want first before you throw out any type of number. And there's two ways you can approach it, but the, the, the way that I always approach it is what's your budget? Because typically the budget for their project is gonna most of the time be higher than what you're anticipating or what you might even say. This is a video you might do for $2,000, but the client comes to you and goes, oh, we have $10,000. Well, now you can make a lot more money doing this job based off the budget they presented to you. A lot of the times you want the client to speak first on what their budget is by just asking them that information. And then I promise you the majority of the time, the budget is gonna be a lot higher than what you would charge. And if it's not, you just tell them like, hey, I don't work with budgets that small. If you guys can get your budget up to this range, then we can work. The majority of the time filmmakers starting out undervalue their work because they just want to do the work and they want the job, which is totally fine. When I first started out doing music videos for Kyle and Futuristic, I was doing those videos for free all the time so that I could build a reel, put together a reel, and send out to prospective clients and people I wanted to work for. And then ultimately I started landing bigger jobs with that reel. And that's another important topic is reels, which I touched on in a previous video. Uh, you can go check that out. But demo reels are very important to landing bigger clients and work as well. After you've ironed out the budget, the creative for the project, you're then wanting, going to want to iron out uh, clear and precise details in either an invoice or a contract and or both. So in the invoice, you can write out the, the basically the scope of the work and the payment terms. Typically the payment terms for you know, projects that I've done you know, over the last eight to 10 years 75% is due up front as the deposit on the project and the 25% is due on the back end. Now this always varies depending on who you're working with, but you as the production company or you as the freelancer can also, you know, lay down your terms. So for most companies, again, and people I work with, I, I usually tell them 75, 25 or 80, 20. Those seem to be the typical numbers that you see in the industry a lot. So 75% due up front, you do the project, and then once the project is finalized and ready to go, the last 25% is due, and then once you're paid in full, you send off the video file. Now, freelance work is different. Someone may just want to hire you to shoot a video, or to DP, or to you know, gaffs, you know, if you do sound, color, whatever it is, and that freelance work is different. You would have a day rate. So if someone wanted to hire me to just shoot a music video, a production company was like, hey Jake, we want you to DP this music video, I would have a day rate. And my day rate might be $1,000. And that would include my work and my gear. So my day rate to shoot this music video would be $1,000 all in. That includes my work for the entire day plus my gear that I own and wanna bring onto the project. And then typically you are paid on either a net 15 or a net 30. Sometimes day of, depending on who you're working with, but most production companies or people will pay out on a net scale, meaning that they have 15 to 30 days to write you a check or pay you for that work. I never agree to any projects that are over a net 30. 
it just there's no point in spending your time shooting something where you're not going to get paid for over a month in my opinion so that freelance work is not on a 75 25 like percent deposit pay scale that's only for if you're basically a production company and you're taking on a project by a company but as a freelancer you just have your day rate some people do half day rates so say your day rate for 12 hours a normal day of shooting is 12 hours if anyone says it's less than that that's not an industry standard day rate an industry standard day rate is 12 hours so if my day rate to dp a music video is a thousand dollars for 12 hours you could also have a half day rate but typically i mean it's, it's rare that you find shoots that take place in five to six hours but if you want to you could also have a half day rate now the absolute don'ts of charging clients no video packages unless you're doing weddings it's just messy it doesn't make any sense trust me you don't have video packages of like oh for a three minute video i charge this and you don't do video packages you either have a flat day rate or you have your production budget and that's it no edit by the hour there's no way for the client to track it you can lie there's no way for that there to be any transparency and honesty there and some people edit slower and faster than others there's no point you should always just come up with a flat agreed upon rate and then if it takes if the client wants to keep adding on extra edits extra notes you just charge a flat rate hey to do another revision of this video it's going to be another 300 dollars but editing by the hour i don't understand why people even talk about this trust me within the inside depths of the industry it's all flat rates it's not by the hour lastly keep it simple clean just non-messy and confusing if your day rate is a thousand dollars to shoot cool that's it but don't try and then tack on like oh it's three hundred dollars also for my camera 200 for my lenses um then you got to throw in for gas and that like you should work all of those numbers into your day rate already just keep it clean simple trust me clients and people who are hiring you don't want to have to deal with all those excess numbers they just want to know what's the rate what's the flat fee that i'm going to have to pay for you to come out and use you and your gear to work on this project if it's a thousand dollars it's a thousand dollars and if it's fifteen hundred dollars it's fifteen hundred dollars if it's five hundred dollars it's five hundred dollars but you yourself need to work in all those numbers into just one number that you present keep it clean simple minimal don't get it all messy with all these layers and tiers of like oh but if you want this it's this cost and this keep it simple guys when a project is being produced there's just so much that's going on they don't want to have to deal with this number and this number and understand and try and calculate you just need to present one single number and you're going to get booked a lot more because it you make their lives easier if you're making a producer's life easier they're going to want to work with you over someone else who's making it a little more difficult for them to get their project done so just to recap number one rule always ask what their budget is if they don't have a budget in mind find out what they want to do what the project would look like oh it's going to be a three music video we want four locations this is kind of the creative idea we had then you present them with a budget of this is going to cost eight thousand dollars freelance work have your day rate have your half day rate this is all inclusive this isn't all these extra add-ons and this and this if you charge a thousand dollars to dp and that's your day rate that's your day rate there's always room for negotiation and you can present it that way if you want to typically though where you're going to find the most success is if you're just hard nosed and you believe in yourself and believe in your numbers and believe in what you're worth again you can always start smaller get a bunch of jobs under your belt build a reel and then start to charge more so that you get that work under you or you can just start off swinging for the fences but my recommendation is i started off just taking every job i could whether it was paid or not i really built a name and reel for myself and connections and then i was just being hired all the time lastly again keep it simple clean and non-confusing when you have too many options and packages and oh to rent you got to rent this and this but my day rates this but oh if you want me to come out with my camera it's this i'm telling you people don't want that clients don't want that don't do it and i'm telling you those are the best ways to charge clients and uh, work out budgets and negotiations if you want any documents uh, such as like 
contracts, invoice templates, and all that stuff, treatment templates, uh, you know, industry pitch decks. We have all of that stuff for any business creative uh, on Tropicolor. I'll link that in the description below. You know, over the years of doing this and running several companies, that's all the documents that we've used and we've turned them into, you know, various templates and stuff that you guys can use for your business. So uh, if you wanna go check that out, that'll be in the description below. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully this video helped. Hit that like button, comment below if you have any questions, if some of that was unclear, and uh, I'll be sure to try and get to as, as much of it as possible. Thanks.